Welcome back to this Boarding Game Officer. We are doing another review of reviews. However, this one's going to be different. <laughs> this is going to be for Spirit Fire. It's got four days left. It's the living board game, right? I say it's going to be a little different because there's two people that have actually played this game. Tim Chun, well, not two people, but two reviewers, right? Because you have Megan Alex and then Tim Chun, and I think he's got, he had some people with him, right? So not a whole lot of people have actually played this game. Everyone's opinion is just what they see on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go over the gameplay as much as I can. Once again, I have not played it, but I've watched all the gameplay videos, the mechanics. Um, they actually just came out with one today. Um, it is Friday. It is Red Friday. Remember everyone deployed. Wear red shirt on Friday. That's my thing. Um, let's get into what is Spirit Fire. So he calls it a living board game. Trying to play off the living card game, but a living board game. Real top level. This is going to be your player setup. This bottom board here is going to be your player character. That's your character there. You've got the book in the middle, which is going to be your quest or your challenges that you go on. And that top row there is going to be the realm that you are a part of. As you can see, it looks like they have about three realms right now, at least in this. I think I only saw two on the Kickstarter, but they have three here. So maybe there's two that come in the core box. I'm not sure. So basically when you start off, you're going to pick a character and there's going to be multiple little personal quests that you could pick from to kind of create your own character from the beginning. And then you're going to have the realm that you pick that you want to go into. Now this game is very abstract, meaning there is no real winning or losing the game is an entirety. It's more of the experience per se. Here we have like kind of potential cards. These are cards that you can add to your deck. Right here they have your conduits that you could hold up to two at a time. They're going to be little spirit animals, or maybe not spirit animals, but animals of some sort that kind of help you along your way that you'll be able to find and befriend and have them become part of your team. And then you're going to have your deck, which is about 30 to 40 cards at a time, and then you discard pile. And then here is where you play your cards. This is like your playing area. This is where you place the cards when you play here is going to be your spirit fire this is what lets you able to do things with your cards there's going to be four different sides to this dice it's a d4 sometimes you're going to be told to take a certain type of spirit fire other times you're just going to roll to see whatever type of spirit fire you get but this is basically your active pool this is the pool that you can get if at any point you have three of one symbol, that causes a little burst and you have to discard all of your dice. So you want Spirit Fire, but you don't want too much because then it's going to get out of control, essentially. Then you're going to have this little thing here, which there's a little marble there. And these are going to give you actions. These are like your main actions that you could do each time you play a card. There's drawing more cards, there's moving, there's rolling some Spirit Fire dice, and there's some clearing, which is clearing some space off your play area. And then you have here, this is where you're potential cards get placed here and this is how you obtain those potential cards that you could add to your deck here you're going to have this little pad here that's got boxes there and at the bottom of each of these cards is going to have some type of shape that you're trying to make on your i can't think of what it's called right now but basically it's your experience different cards you play different things you do in a mission is going to give you opportunity to draw horizontal or vertical lines and when you create the shape that is on the bottom of the card you get that card you get to put it in your deck or it goes into later that you can put it into your deck later that's what i'm not totally sure if it goes into your deck right away or if it's until you rest which we'll talk about later or when that actually enters your deck but basically at that point you can finally put that into your deck and then this box here is going to be your spark. Your spark is your life points. You're basically going to have a deck of cards. And every time you interact with a quest, every time you go to do something, or when it tells you you're going to pull one card, and this here is your discard pile, basically. But when you do it, at least something happens. It either tells you to get some type of spirit fire. It tells you to maybe clear off something. Right? It usually gives you some type of ability. But at the same time, you're losing spark of life. Because when that deck ends, that triggers end game so that's your player board there now up here you're going to have three decks here they're all going to have different little symbols on it and those symbols are these are the challenges that you're going to do basically this thing this is going to tell you where to go in this book more or less not maybe not every time but more or less and it's going to be very thematic, right? So if you're in the forest, the forest is going to be the diamond. And so you're going to go to the diamond. If you're told to draw a circle, it's probably because you're in a city, right? I'm just throwing those out. I'm not sure. But right, each 
thing is going to be pretty thematic to what you're doing when you're told to. Now, this is going to be your map. Now, this map is actually pretty cool. As you can see, it's cards. These cards can interchange. They're flipped face down, and then as you move, you will flip them over as you're trying to search for things and explore, basically. And they're going to have those little symbols, the diamond circle or not. When you go onto that area, that is when you are going to draw one from there, and you're going to do that quest. Well, not that quest. I think they call it a challenge. I'm not sure what they call it. Because then over here, they have quests and you can have multiple quests going at once and sometimes there'll be a quest to find this part of city on the map or it might be come come here but you need five spirit fire of this type and then that quest is complete and then when that quest is complete you turn it over and only the one just go into your completed quest two it will have a some type of milestone on it that if completed in a certain way you can put that milestone in your milestone pack or it will have another challenge on the back that you have to complete that challenge before you can do anything with it so the quest just allows you to flip that or when completing the quest it just allows you to flip the card over and then you do whatever it says now let's talk about these milestones here depending on the quest and if you complete it you will gain these milestones and as you see some of these quest cards are going to say what type of milestones you need to have that quest completed so you might need to be to this part of the town have this much spirit fire and you need these type of milestones these milestones thematically are stuff you have learned right whether you've learned more about a certain type of animal the more you've learned about certain type of ruins right that's kind of thematically what they entail meaning you need to know more or less about a certain thing to complete that quest and now we're going in so now let's say we get this quest and we get this all of maybe not all of these but everything that they've shown they're going to use a challenge ring you're going to be you're going to have like a starting point any point and you're going to go around this board moving doing different stuff each place where your challenge ring goes is going to give you opportunity you're going to be playing cards one thing I want to point out here too is that there's two rows in your play area. As you can see, when you get into a challenge, they're actually going to have different uh, maybe rules or regulations of some sort of what each column does or what you either what each column does or what you can or can't do if you play a card in that column. Right, just gives you a little bit more strategy to play as you play your cards, which we'll talk about here in a little bit and everything. So these challenges are there's gonna be multiple things you can do. Sometimes it's gonna say, hey, you need to get your challenge ring from here to here, and that's it. Like you're just trying to get to the end. You're playing your cards, trying to get your challenge coin there, trying to get your challenge coin there. Or it might just say, go and learn, and you could end the challenge at any point you're just trying to see how much you want there's two or three ways that a mission will end either you're just choosing to end whenever you want two if this if your play area gets completely full then you can't play any more cards therefore you have to rest and a rest will end the challenge or if you have no cards to play in your hand then you will have to rest which will end the mission. So I think that's two ways or three ways. I guess the third way is if you complete the challenge, if it has a certain thing. But when you rest, you're going to take your discard pile, everything in your play area and your deck and shuffle it all back together. And you're going to take all your spirit fire and discard it again. So you might have some good spirit fire and some good cards out and all your bad cards in your discard pile are already that you might not want to go to the end of as far as you can because you might want not want to rest yet so there's a lot of strategy within that of how far you want to push it or maybe you do want to just push it because maybe you do want to rest so you're just going to go until you are forced to rest right there's definitely different strategy what you could do for each challenge now let's go to playing cards here every time you play a card you are going to be able to activate one of your four main abilities sorry i don't remember what they're called right off the bat but your four main abilities you place a card you you get what you either move you could draw cards you can gain spirit fire or you can clear which gives you basically more time right kind of you could clear cards off your playing area now these marbles tell you how much you could do of each so if your marble is on two and you do a push action you are going to be able to move two different cards and abilities are going to give you opportunity to move that marble up so you can do more and more of each one now also with each card it's going to have these two symbols at the one or two symbols at the top I say this this has a purple, so you will need the transmutation spirit fire in your active pool to be able to activate this part here. If you do not have it, you just don't do that. You just do you place it, you do a basic action, one of your main actions, and that's it. If you do have that, you don't have to pay. It's not a pay cost. It's just if you have it, you can do that ability. That pretty much is the basis of what this game is. Now, what I don't understand is why didn't they talk about this earlier? <laughs> you could go watch Alex's video and he tries to explain it, which is so high level that it tells you nothing. <laughs> I, I mean, and I'll give it to Alex. He tried his best. He really did try to explain it. I don't know if it was like a rule from Orange Nebula that told him that they 
he couldn't say anything about the, the actual mechanics. So he's trying to explain how to play a game without being able to tell you the mechanics, right? So uh, props to him for what for him trying, but it doesn't really tell you much. But they have come out with two game mechanic videos now that really kind of dive deeper into what is going on in this world. One thing that I like to I like to picture it because there's no combat, right? I, n- I haven't talked anything about combat. Now it's kind of like it does say it's like an MMO, right? MMO RPG, which is exactly right if you just take out all the fighting, right? You're playing World of Warcraft, take out the fighting. That's what this is, essentially. I mean, that might not be a perfect analogy, but, right, you're just going around the world, right? There's no, if you're playing World of Warcraft online, you don't ever win, right? You don't win and finish and beat the game. You can't beat the game with an online game, right? You're just running around, getting experience, doing stuff, and having fun. That's basically what this is. But the cool part is that they call it a game plus mechanic. I think that's what they call it. It's not like that. Meaning, when you finish with your character, there's going to be an you trigger end game and there's a lot of end game sequences that you go through. And then you can start over the game with a new character, but your first character is going to pass down knowledge to that second character, right? Kind of like a legacy aspect to it. Like, oh, now I'm starting with a new character, but I have so many different options that I could do from the beginning. So it's, yes, you're starting over again, but you're starting over from a different ground. Now I'm going to go into why I said a different ground, right? Not a higher ground, just a different ground. You definitely do some quote-unquote leveling up in this game, right? When you complete quest, it'll have you open up a pack that you could add cards to your deck, you could add cards to your potential deck, you could, it'll add more quests, it'll add more challenges, right? Every time you do something, it's gonna add more to the game. And that's basically what it is. It's just adding to the game. It's not necessarily leveling up. A way that I kind of pictured it is instead of leveling up vertically, you're leveling up horizontally. You're getting more access to stuff to build your deck according to a single challenge meaning that one might one challenge might be a little hard for you because you don't have the cards to do it is that because it's a higher level challenge mm, not really it just might mean it goes more towards the awe spirit fire if you need more on your deck does not have as much of that and then then maybe this challenge is harder for you but are you really leveling up if you go change your deck to be more awe spirit fire focused not really it's just kind of lateral right and so it that has that deck building mechanic in it now it does most of the time, I, I don't know if it always has this, but usually when you turn over the quest, it's going to have you choose, do you want to do a challenge that's more awe focused or do you want more that's more transmutation focused? So you could essentially choose, be like, oh, my deck is built for transmutation. I'm going to do that one. Or you might go, actually, I'm not super strong in awe, but their rewards might be more awe focused and I want to become more awe focused. So I'm going to try that one to see if I can't get more cards, right? So there's a lot of strategy in that way of how to build out your character and that's essentially there's no beginning or end i mean there's beginning or end of challenges but no real turns you're not there's no enemy's turn because there's no battle you're not waiting for something else to happen you basically just have this list of quests you could go on it my, my other thought was um like zelda right I, I love zelda on the switch it's basically zelda but without the fighting right you're going around to the little shrines and you're doing those quests and when you do those quests you get extra stuff i mean zelda you are leveling up essentially because you're getting more hearts but still like there's just things around the ground that you could grab and put together from day one or day 30 and um, this is not a perfect analogy but right and you're running around you have a little side quest you could go on and right you could go to the menu quest and you've got like 30 quests you could do and you could do any of them you could start one in the middle of one you'd be like eh, actually i want to go over here and do this right you don't have to complete one quest now when you start a challenge usually that has a beginning and an end of a challenge however quest you could be halfway through one quest and be like you know what i don't want to do this i want to go do that other quest right so you could get so lost uh, lost in a good way i guess like zelda i don't know if you've ever played zelda but i'll be like okay i want to go here because this is what i'm doing but along the way i find like five different things that i want to do as i'm trying to go to this spot that's kind of how they explained it explained it here is you could be doing one thing and then on your way to doing that quest you might like pop off on like three or four other quests on your way to that quest and so i think that that actually makes me really excited for it um i was not very excited for this game but now that i've watched the game play videos it's made me more excited for it so i encourage you to go watch those One's an hour, the other one's like an hour and a half, so they're a little bit longer. That's why I wanted to do this, just to try to do this as quick as I can, so you could understand a little bit more about what is going on with this game. So, once again, it is a solo journey, and can be played alongside others who require a character box. So, let's go through that real quick. 
what the world does that mean, <laughs> right? Where it's solo, but can be played alongside others. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to have your buddy that has their own $100 box, right? Their character, they're going to have this part, that bottom board there of their own. And they're going to have their challenge book of their own. However, you're going to share the realm board. Now, sharing that realm board you, is where you can flip over challenges. You could go along the map together. But when you get a challenge, you're going to play your own challenge board. You each have your own challenge board and challenge ring that you're moving around the board however when you play a card your main actions you can give to your buddy like oh you need to move i don't need to move right now so i'm going to do this and let you move I, I think it's something to that effect i might not be fully understanding that right but there is very slight interaction where your card play can help each other but you are still actually playing your own little solo game challenge yourself and you're kind of going around the realm with each other and since there is no leveling up vertically it's not like oh you've been playing for 100 hours i've only played for five hours so i can't jump in with you because those challenges are going to be too hard for me right that's not a thing because everything is just horizontally now one might have a better deck for a certain challenge than another person but it could be that the person that played for five hours is going to have a better deck than the person that's played for 200 hours just because of how the deck is built right so jumping in and out there is some in a mixed player, but it's still, I would say, like 80% solo game with a little bit of 20% communication back and forth, helping each other out a little bit. Um, so that's kind of the idea of what is going on there. Now, I do think that this is really good, this setup, because they have these boxes here. That is what makes setup so quick. You don't have to go in and find all these cards, all these. You just pull out the deck of the box, the deck box. It has everything in there. You grab out your deck. You grab out your two conduits that you want, your potentials, and lay everything out, and you're good, right? Everything is... From it going from the box to the table, the setup and the organization of it that they've set up is very smooth. At least what it, from what it seems. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> so let's kind of go through Kickstarter real quick here. Gameplay and mechanics, we've already talked about that. This is their new one that they just came out with today. I just watched it. This is like the hour-long one if you want to see that. This is just that quick overview that doesn't say a whole lot about it. Why support now? It is going to, you're going to get a whole lot of free for supporting. So it's not going to be Kickstarter exclusive. They call it free for supporting, meaning, right? Just basically the value goes up in what you're getting. And it might be harder to find later. And uh, they do have a lot of, uh, they have had a lot of voting throughout the game for stuff. Now, I mean, there's only a few days left now, so don't know how much you'll get into there. So the core pledge is going to be $99. If you notice that this current value is up to 134, it used to be 122. And that is because of the free for supporting stuff. So, you get the main box, uh, which does include the Awakening Realm. So that Awakening Realm, I'm guessing... So that, and that's what I don't... Not sure with the realms. Like, is that the only realm it comes with? Or is there one in that base box? And then you get an Awakening Realms as well. So you come with two for the base box? I'm not sure. But then you have a Community Journey Pack. Journey Pack is going to be an extra card with extra, you know, quests and challenges and cards to put in your deck. It's going to be that, but it's going to be community-driven, which is what that's talking about. You're going to have three additional character packs. Now, this is what I was talking about when you have different characters that you could choose from. This kind of gives you a base... To it but your deck is up 30 so you're gonna and this is just eight to ten cards so you could join a couple of these together along with other things to create your character there at the very beginning you've got the neoprene mat you've got two more personal quests now these personal quests can go along with these character packs that give you extra cards basically each character pack is gonna have two two sets personal quests one of two and two of two basically if you pick one you're gonna open it up and you can say hey i want to try to do the wandering sage but you're gonna keep que personal quest two of two closed and not open it until until it tells you to do so. Basically, it's going to give you a more other side quests to do throughout your journey. Once again, another set of personal quests there that you're getting for free, which is why this current value of the core pledge has increased. Now, the partner pledge, this is where basically it's just you're getting two of the same thing. Trio pledge, once again, it's just three of the same thing with three cups of all the free items as well. So it's just a bundle, basically, of three. So this is kind of what I was talking about before. You get your character box, you open up a open world realm, and then your personal quest pack. Which, once again, those personal quests back can be at any time, any place, anywhere. So it doesn't matter which realm you're in, you can do those personal quests. Here's a little conceptual overview, which I've already kind of gone over here. There, oh, One thing I did not talk about is these burdens. Burdens are just basically going to be negative cards that go into your deck that basically, as they thematically talk about how it's the burdens from your past life or your, or maybe not your past life, but your past. Anyways, they're negative cards that enter your deck that you have to play down on your play space and they usually do some type of um, negative thing for you that you have to adjust around. Here's the little marbles that I was talking about, like do your main actions. There's that, your companion 
companions that you could get on those are kind of your conduits, your journeys. Um, actually, I didn't talk about these. So you can pick two of these conduits to be on your board. And as you can see here, you can do that ability, whatever they have on them, as long as you have that spirit fire, those two spirit fires in their thing. So they're kind of like a constant ability that you have if you could pay for it or use it. There's the challenges. There's exploring the world. There's all, the discipline. Disciplines are the cards. So you can get more and more different types of discipline. Here's your, uh, what are they? Flicker, that's what they call it. Here's your flicker, which is your experience, which is how you get more cards from your potential deck. And then you could pass on your wisdom to ignite new stories. So each card is going to have a value on it. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but that's going to have a value. At the end of the game, when you trigger end game, you're going to add up all of your points there. And that is going to have you pass down your wisdom to your next character. Those points are going to be available for the next character that they can do stuff with during setup, as I understand it, at least. Here's the solo friends that I kind of talked about where you could kind of go in together. But still, it's only like 20% multiplayer, more 80% still solo. Now, this is just talking about how it's new. That There's no combat, which is definitely new. Resolve. Resolve. That's what your main actions are called, is your resolve. So that's what that is. And then, you know, you are the story. You're not, right? You're not in Zelda, jumping in Zelda and try to complete this story quest. You are you in this realm, and you are just building you up if that makes sense. Because you could choose your personal quest. You know, if you want to go onto the carpentry route, I don't, I'm throwing things out here, I have no idea, but you know, you want to be the carpentry route. If you want to go, I don't know, be Peace Corps route, right? <laughs> like, you could go any route and you're just developing your story. Uh, face intriguers with challenges. This is um, talking about how each challenge is going to have extra things to alter the rules each time. Once again, you could, like, get any extra stuff if you do the extra hard thing, or you can just do the basis, right? There's no winning or losing, it's just how much can you get done with both with the challenges sometimes and with the whole game as a whole now as i said once you complete the quest that's going to give you more opportunities more quests more cards more challenges you're going to open up more packs and that's just going to open up everything else for you into this realm and this is just good examples of all the different type of challenges you go on you can see how they're all different they all use that challenge ring but they're very different the goal is different sometimes it's to get here to here sometimes it's just to learn anyway it's kind of interesting there now what's included in the actual character box itself we've got the 600 cards which are your discipline cards more or less and your map cards and personal quests and all that stuff you've got 37 Seven resealable card packs that you're going to be opening out throughout the character packs and personal quests and around progression packs. Five dual purpose display store boxes, right? That's what I was talking those boxes there that just keep everything really nice and organized. Components, challenge box, your, your spirit fire dice, and your resolve marbles, I guess, <laughs> that, you know, makes me your your main actions and your flicker writing pads which might be a writing pad or a dry erase character now community journey this kind of goes on to um that very first thing that we're talking about free for supporting the community journey this kind of says what is going on here as you can see you could click here to vote let's see if it'll let me vote without backing it yet oh there you go there you go click to vote so it still is going to let you vote there anyways this is going to be you know extra little personal journeys extra little quests extra places you could go within the realm that they're kind of doing as the community that you could build and vote on that's kind of cool. Now, the stone or these color kits, nothing is different. It's just the color, which if you're by yourself, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of nice if you are if you do play side by side with someone, at least if you have different colors, right? Everything is just going to have that tone and different art around that tone of color. So you've got stone color, you've got purple, you've got green, you've got gold. What is this one? you got blue, and I guess blue is that last one. Now we're talking about the realm box here, an awakening that is included into the core pledge here. This is going to give you that little top row there of what you need. That's going to give you that map and the quest and the challenges for that realm there. Now, as an extra, for another 20 bucks, you could buy the Slabs realm as an add-on, which is going to be the same idea. It's just going to give you a different realm to go and explore in. And you can buy the Neoprene mat. This is not needed. This is just with the uh, art of the Slabs realm but essentially the exact same mat and then you could buy a character pack bundle that's going to give you what is this seven more seven more things that you like expression reflection comprehension right so these are things you can add to your deck and go different ways with your character so this i think adds a lot of replayability and choices and options getting this character pack. i mean you already have 12 so it's not like they don't have much at all but this definitely opens up a little bit more then you companion quest bundle these are quests you can go on to try to get more uh, companions or conduits that can help you now you can only have out two at a time but each time you rest is when you can put out new ones but so this is how you can kind of find more of those going on these quests to find that here's the winds of wisdom quest which once again four other personal quests to kind of push out your character 
way to build it. Wisdom culture, the wisdom of experience, the wisdom of music, right? You could pretty much make your character whatever you want here. And now this is actually something new. This wasn't there when I looked at it last, but the antique copper upgrade set, which is just going to make everything copper, right? Just a little fancy thing to make it more premium. And then your spark deck can become foil alternate. So that's kind of cool. Foiled again for $14, just making your spark deck all foil cards. And now they have the all-in extras. So this is basically an all-in just for the extras, not the whole game. So that copper, the companion, the wind. Winds of Wisdom, the Slabs Realm, the Slabs Neo Prima, and the alternate foil cards. So basically, if you already have that base pledge, you can just go in and add this all-in extra kit. You don't have to change your pledge is the idea of what they want to do with that, of why they're doing it that way. And now the sleeves. This is actually kind of interesting because they're semi-transparent, these corners here. So you can see what type of card there are, whether they're the white, which is your deck, or black, which is... might Maybe that's your uh, spark deck. I'm not sure what the difference is. I know your deck that you play with is the white deck. Anyway, so you can see what deck it is but it still has the cool sleeves that go according to whichever color you chose there or you could buy just full-on clear sleeves for it all or you could get full-on opaque decks for your deck itself so you know they're going to be your deck there with this with your color there basically or you could get all in sleeves kit which is going to have everything you need for it this kind of tells you what type of what you need for what you want to sleeve if you want to sleeve everything if you just want to sleeve your deck if you want to sleeve every, all, even all your potential cards or if you just want to wait till it gets into your deck to sleeve it right kind of goes through that of how many sleeves you need and what you need for that it's kind of cool that they kind of help you out there so you know what you need or want here's right the two creators that have any experience with this tim chun and board game co there and now the shipping here is really quite confusing i don't know why they did this i mean i guess if you know about it all it helps but it's very very detailed <laughs> which means hopefully it's, it's as accurate as it can get hopefully but as you can see here us is 25 just for the base box there anywhere up to about 45 dollars if you're getting multiple bundles there and then we've got meet the team there all right so there you have that was kind of took a lot longer than expected <laughs> but i really wanted to kind of go over what the game actually was because there's not much out there except there are two videos and they're really long videos so i wanted to really kind of go through the base of what the game was now let's go through what people are saying about it either the people that looked at about it on um, both Tim Chun and Board Game Co. What they have talked about it, but one of the so we'll start here with the good. And one of the really big things is that it changes so much, and the surprises are very fun, right? When you do a quest, you're gonna flip over the what packs it opens, what the exploring is really exploring it. You never know what's gonna come of it, and that is very exciting. What you do affects everything, right? If you do this quest, it's gonna go over here, means that you've befriended this guy, but now you meet this guy, and this guy hates this guy, so you actually don't have good relations with this guy because this guy knows you you're like this guy right so just because you do one quest for someone it can totally change of what you do down the road that you know you're not even aware of yet right so that how everything affects each other is really cool um everything is definitely has a sense of challenge to it right it's not just going through the motions with everything these challenges really give you that thought of like okay what's the best way to optimize this place here so i don't use so much smart so much spark but yeah i still get as much as i can out of this challenge and with that the rules are changing for each challenge so not only does the board look different you also have different challenges and each row in your play area is going to do different things that's going to throw wrenches of how to do everything so just because you were good with one challenge does not mean you're going to be good with the next one um, and because of that it makes the challenges very rewarding when you do it when you're able to accomplish so much or when there is a beginning and end to one that does give you that reward you get that feeling of rewardedness from it and um, the fact that you could pass down the characters so you could play as one character and you could go again and you're going to have a not only a totally new experience because you're a new character but you're going to have a totally different experience because you have that pass down wisdom from it so that like new game plus is really cool the table present and the art i mean you could just watch their videos the art is really amazing the table presence presence is really cool um alex stated that so far what he sees he loves which is saying something you know he because he went over there he said he played for about seven hours so you could take that for what it's worth um uh, the one good thing is is w you do know that this game will fund or not fund you know it is going to deliver because they're passed with vindication and unsettled you know for sure that it is gonna deliver that's not 
a worry. However, going into the battle a little bit here is time-wise, who knows, right? Because Unsettled's taken two years now. So timeline is maybe a little bit iffy, but it will for sure uh, deliver. Now, let's get into the not good nor bad. This is kind of a longer list here than a lot of my other videos, but it's because no one really knows what's going on here. And so a lot of this stuff is kind of not good nor bad because they don't know what's going to happen, right? The no combat can be good or bad depending if that's if you like that combat. If you're a dungeon... If you'd like Dungeon Crawlers, you like rolling dice and attacking, this might not be the game for you because there is no combat, right? But if you're okay with that, if you're about that efficiency engine, this is the game, like, right? This is all about efficiency and doing the best that you can to make it, to get through it the most efficient efficient way possible. Um, Ken, I was talking about there's no losing, right? That really can make it hard to feel like, well, if there's no losing, then what's the point of playing the game if you can't win or lose, right? Alex does a really good job in his video for the first, like, 20 minutes. He just talks about why do we play games? We play games, and everyone might be different, but if you're playing a game to get the experience, if you're playing a game to feel challenged and feel rewarded for completing challenges and going through a story arc and figuring out what's going on and where's going what and exploring the world, right? If that's what you're about, this game is there, even if it's no win or lose situation. Um, kind of like what I talked about, there's no real leveling up, but leveling sideways, <laughs> if, essentially, which can be a good thing or a bad thing where you do feel like you're changing, but you're not necessarily getting stronger in one specific way either. It does promise a lot, which can be a good thing, but also could be a very bad thing because let's hope they can fulfill all those promises of how in-depth of a game they feel that they are making, right? Because both Tim Chun and Boy Game Co. Paul only played it seven hours max for how in-depth this is. Hey, bud. <laughs> so because it promises a lot, it could be a good thing or a bad thing. That's If they could hold on to it, I think it'll be amazing. But they're they're setting that bar high, so if they don't meet that bar, I feel like it could easily lose after it gets delivered. Um, if you like elements of Unsettled and, Vindic and Vindication, this game has a little bit of both of that. So once again, good thing or bad thing, depending on how you like those games. And there is a a deck building element to this deck building in the sense of like marvel champions or magic or something like that right not deck building is in your constructing your deck as you play but you're going to construct your deck before deck construction maybe that's a better word than deck building when I, when people say deck building i think like dominion or ascent or something like that i don't know but this is more deck construction, right? You're going to construct your deck beforehand to about 30 to 40 cards. You're going to have a deck of cards that you could go through to build, right? So, and as you go, you're going to get more cards to construct your deck better for what you want. Not really better for everything, but better for what you want. And now let's go on to the bad here. Now the bad, they are doing a little bit better now because they have two gameplay videos out. But they use a lot of fancy words. And and when I say fancy words, it means big words that can mean a lot, but don't mean anything at the same time. Right? When you say big words, they mean a lot, but they don't. They're not specific. Right? Big, open world, realm, exploring. It's like, that sounds awesome, but what does that actually mean? Right? Well, now they have a little bit more gameplay videos. So I don't think that's as big of a negative now, but there's still just so much unknown and all the explanations are so fluffy and high level that it's like, well, how do you know if this game is for you or not? Right. Which is hopefully go, hopefully my gameplay mechanic overview made sense. Go through their videos to really see if this game is for you or not. Another one of the big worries is, you know, are you going to play this for 30 hours and be done? It says that you could play up to 200 hours. Can you keep me interested for 200 hours? All right. Once again, that big promise. Are you actually going to be able to do that? That's questionable. And once again, the timeline on the printing, you know, on sales taking two years. Eh, most, you know, is this actually going to deliver when it says it is? Eh, that is questionable. Now, onto who's backing. I only had two people state that they are not backing it. Both Game Brigade and Bad at Board Games. They said that they are not backing it. Um, Game Brigade stated because he doesn't play solo and this just really didn't stick out to him. Bad at Board Games, he really was just not very happy with it because it just doesn't tell you a lot about it when you go through the Kickstarter. Um, I mean, now with the gameplay videos, there's a little bit more, but it's right, really hard to know if it's for you and if you're going to spend 100 bucks for it or not. Now, the value, at least going off of what Vindication and Unsettled, is that they... For Orange Nebula, their games seem to be really good resale value soon after they deliver. But the more time goes on, the more they kind of diminish down in value. 
That's just not saying that this is going to do it, but that's just kind of the pattern with Orange Nebula's game so far. Um, game Brigade kind of talked about how nowadays it's really kind of hard to actually sell your games for what you paid, especially when you factor in shipping to try to get your what you back or what you paid plus what you paid for shipping. Now, it, just in general, nowadays it's harder, so you might want to put that into uh, thoughts as well. Now, actually, Quacklope on his Quack and Co channel just put out a video uh, last night or this morning as well or a day or two ago anyways about his ratings he rates it out of 100 he'll go through kickstarters and rate them on multiple factors overall he gave it an 88 out of 100 which and that, that's more of a trustedness for the game right he's never played it so it's not going off of the game itself it's kind of going all over the trusty trustworthiness of the campaign whether it'll deliver whether the designers are good what like the general sense of it um he gave it an 88 which is not bad which the more that they come out with the gameplay mechanics the more i agree with that because there's not a whole lot of that out there it still makes me question a little bit but just because like well how do you know when you just show this like i have no idea what it'll be even like and how would i know if i will like it but like i said the more i watch the game mechanic videos i actually think it does look very interesting i really like the challenges i like the million different directions you could go that open worldness i think looks very interesting so this time i just i've started my rating when i do like percent wise of like percent positives out of negatives but i'm not doing it on this one because i just there's only two reviewers who have actually played it and even both of them were still like very high level talking and so i don't feel like the positives were really like true positives and i don't feel like the negatives were really true negatives it was just like here's my general thoughts i don't have strong conviction conviction one way or the other of the good and bad um but so that's why i wanted to give you um, Jesse from Quackalope or Quack and Co. A number on that, an 88 out of 10, or 88, <laughs> 88 out of 100, for basically a trustworthiness of the game. Um, my thoughts after watching all the videos of the game mechanics, and I watched, you know, over I think 17 videos of people talking about it at least, that my thoughts is if you're a solo gamer, I mean, unless you absolutely need combat and need like a dungeon crawler, I think this is a good back. Um, I've gotten, I, I like solo. Um, but this makes me very interested. Like, I just want to explore the world, <laughs> right? This is where this kind of takes me. So I was not planning on backing this. I still don't know if I will, but I'm definitely more on the edge than I was before. That's for sure. And that's just the two game mechanic videos. Like, if they came out with more, I think they could push so many more. Not that sounds bad, but so many more people would be interested if they actually knew what the game was about. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, uh, I, I'm excited to see where this goes and what they do with it. If they could really make this dive deeping or deep dive into like this world and stuff, right? And they call it a living board game because th- in the future, they'll come out with more personal quests, more realms that you could explore, more things you could go throughout with all your characters or with your character. And so I think that's why the living part is because they'll be coming out with more realms and more personal quests and more stuff like that that you could add to your game right away. It's not like, oh, here's this expansion, but let me finish playing the base game before I can play the expansions, right? These expansions can be thrown right into it. Like you're like, oh, I'm, I'm done with this realm. I want to jump over to this realm, right? You can do that. And so so I think that's the living board game part of it anyways that was much longer than i was expecting let me know what you think of this game if you're going to back it and i will see you later